And Bill, you've been right about many things about China, and I know you signaled a little bit more, a little bit about this this crackdown, so to speak, right? But that they wouldn't do too much ahead of the party congress. Why? Well, I was on here, I think, three times this year so far, talking yeah. about this issue with you, Betty Lou, and it's always great to be on with you. But I'm not surprised uh, that they're starting to move ahead on this, because uh, you know the debt has really soared. It, uh, from the time of the beginning of the Great Recession, when it was 150 percent of GDP, it's over 280 percent of GDP and, and rising. And uh, when you take a look at the shadow banking area, it's now in, in the area of $9 trillion, which is almost 87 percent of GDP of China. Mm -hmm. So that they would crack down, which I, I mentioned to you, would happen with the new head of the CBRC, the banking right. regulator. Right. So and this is, is just a, the beginning, Bill. Yeah, this is just the beginning. Because remember, he has a long experience, including having run uh, <clears throat> China Construction Bank. And he said when he took the job, he was going to clean up the banks and he was going to move as necessary. And so I think the move you're seeing, uh, you know, with Anbang, uh, with Fu San, uh, with uh, Dali and Wanda, mm -hmm. and the Hainan Island group is, is really not surprising. I think this is just the beginning. The other thing that's been hitting in is, of course, uh, China lost a trillion dollars in reserves uh, over the last year right. from four to three. So all of these things are uh, coming together and uh, I think right, you're going to see more of that after the 19th Party Congress this fall, whether it be October or, or beginning of November. But most people think it'll probably take place before the end of October. Right. But it's interesting that, you know, uh, it, it, you know, hitting some of these companies that really are sort of, I don't want to call them iconic, but, but they certainly are, you know, the big well-known names that even here in the U.S. investors know uh, pr pretty much offhand. You know, they're, they're making an example, perhaps, of Anbang. I mean, you know, what kind of, uh, I guess, what, what message are they sending, right, directly to the domestic companies uh, in China? And how much of a material effect is that going to have? I think you're exactly right, Betty Lou. They're making an example of all four of these companies. And I right. think even more on Bung, because remember, their chairman has suddenly disappeared. Yeah. And uh, they Big think uh, yeah. that we may next Was. see him yeah. in on criminal charges or something. And there's also been accusations about the selling of products, these insurance products, you know, the shadow banking type products that the, uh, the, uh, the People's Bank of China and the, and the regulators, uh, whether it be the uh, insurance regulator uh, or uh, the securities regulator or the CBRC, the CSRC and the C CBRC are not happy with. So I think this is very much an example uh, to other Chinese companies to clean up their act, uh, write off their bad loans, and uh, be very careful on what kind of foreign investments they get in, in, involved in. Bill, do you want to Hong Kong? So how do you think Anbang should respond? I mean, so far they've said on WeChat that, that they're not going to be doing anything and selling their assets, but we've already seen the likes of Wanda sell some of their uh, businesses and theme parks and hotels. So eventually, are they going to have to give in? Well, I think there's no doubt uh, when, uh, when Beijing decides to get tough, uh, the companies will follow. And the question is a matter of timing and how tough they'll be. As I said, I know personally the, the, uh, the new head of the CBRC, and when he tells you that he's going to do something, he does it. And uh, he definitely has the backing of President Xi Jinping, without a doubt. Uh, you were mentioning, you know, things could get more interesting, I guess, after the People's Party Congress and could see a further squeeze uh, in the banking system. What exactly would that look like? What kind of further escalation are, are you expecting? Well, I think there are a couple of problems. I've mentioned some to Betty Lou, but in addition to the ones that I talked about with Betty Lou, you also have the question of these zombie companies. And uh, uh, President Xi Jinping has mentioned on several occasions over the last couple of years that he wants to clean them up. Not much has been done in that area. Uh, we're talking about coal, steel, shipbuilding, uh, that type of area. So I think that all of this will fit together and they will make the banks do several things. Uh, one, they'll make them write off these loans uh, instead of just extending them. I think they'll make them raise capital where necessary. And one of the things that uh, Zhu Runji, who was a great uh, premier of China, and went through a similar problem, although the, you know, in, in the 1990s, the size of the Chinese economy w was very much smaller than it is today. But he formed these asset management companies. Uh, and in addition to doing what I, I just mentioned, he also 
uh, had the uh, banks uh, roll off a lot of these problem debts into the asset management companies so they could sell them over time. So I think we're going to see all of that because remember, we have an overheated property sec uh, sector mm -hmm. uh, for a long time in, uh, in China. And uh, at the same time, I think uh, what we're seeing in China is growth is starting to slow down. And uh, the 19th Party Congress is coming up. And I don't think the President Xi Jinping wants much more of a slowdown until he gets through uh, picking uh, the members of the Standing Committee of the Politburo which is the key issue right now. Then I think uh, the banking regulators, the securities regulators, the insurance regulators right. are all going to get a lot tougher. Uh, Bill, I, I'm, I'm curious. I know you watch so much what's going on in China, but you know, given that there's been so much Chinese money coming into the U.S. and put into real estate, right, uh, put into uh, into hotels, do you think that this this crackdown, so to speak, which is you know which is happening, uh, how big of an impact is going to have? Is that going to have here? in the U.S.? A very good question. I think it will have some sort of an impact because it's not, it's been primarily real estate, but also they've been keeping up the art markets yeah. worldwide. And I think uh, there's going to be a crackdown on all of that. Uh, so I think, as I try and tell people, because when you talk about the world, everyone looks, what's the United States doing? Yeah. What's the EU doing? What we ought to be looking at is what China's going to be doing and what's going to happen in the, uh, after the 19th Party Congress. That's what I look at more than anything else.